Oh, hi there. I thought I'd do a quick video about something called Nova. It's a um, text editor that I've been trying out recently. It's been out for a little while and no one seems to be talking about it. And my first impressions are actually pretty good. Um, so it's this guy here. It's made by a company called Panic, who if you're not familiar with, they are a Mac based software developer. Um, they do some other cool stuff like they released a few, well, they've published a few games like Firewatch and Tired Goose Game. Uh, they've also released a little handheld, which is nice and hackable called the Playdate. They're a really cool company and they tend to make really polished um, software. And their previous bread and butter was um, a code editor called Coda, which is like an old school Dreamweaver-esque, you know, web 1.0 static HTML edity thing, which was popular with a load of people. And they also make a FTP client called Transmit, which is um, still very good. It's, it's about as good as FTP clients get. I still use it. I'm one of those heathens that uses FTP and it's a really good FTP client. And they released a text editor pretty recently, maybe about 18 months ago, I think I said. But here it is. Um, we've just got a little sort of HTML website project in here. I've been doing a bit more HTML recently. I haven't done any in, in quite a while. Um, I thought I'd build a little website. I use it as an excuse to try out some stuff I've not done before. For example, Tailwind, Alpine JS. And I thought, you know, while I'm at it, I've got access to this thing that I bought a while ago. I'll give it a go, see how it, see how it is. And, you know, so far, I actually quite like it. So in terms of the features you get, um, it does most of the things you expect from a modern text editor, things like multiple cursors, a command palette, et cetera, et cetera, having a mini map. But the way it's kind of done is everything's got this additional layer of, of nice, very Mac-like polish, if you're into that kind of thing. Uh, everything works very well, and it's also really, really performant. So it runs as quick as something like Sublime Text. So I'm a Visual Studio Code guy normally before then. I'd use Sublime Text. I still keep Sublime Text lying around if I need to open massive files because Visual Studio Code is evil when it comes to resources. Uh, this thing runs so far about as quick as Visual, uh, as about as quick as as Sublime does. You can open massive files and it. it doesn't seem to bat an eyelid. And again, it's got lots of nice little touches all over the place. Um, for example, in the minimap, we get not only if we we can obviously do the standard thing, see the outline of our code, but also if you hover over a line, it highlights and it shows us what's at the beginning of that line, which is actually a really nice feature. Um, we get little inline, you know, um, get status messages, so you can just discard changes in line, that kind of thing. You also get inline, you get like a, a diff tool, which is really, really nice. The sidebars are pretty cool. So these can be split vertically. You can have sidebars on both sides. The window management is quite nice, but this is broken down to different tabs, similar to Visual Studio Code, but there's much more of them. So I've got a find and replace, I've got an outliner, I've got um, snippets, I've got an inbuilt Git client, which is quite nice. There's an inbuilt FTP client. If you're the kind of person who wants to sync um, directly to an FTP thing, it does that. It has a task runner, and down here I've got my output for my tasks, which shows up here if they fail, because they often fail, because I'm terrible at Webpack. But it's quite nice. Um, in terms of extensions, it has a bunch. So it hasn't got the same coverage as Visual Studio Code, but there seems to be a pretty healthy amount of extensions for the most general purpose stuff. Um, so I've got things like Prettier, I've got things like Emmet, stuff that I use every single day, Twig and YAML. I don't ever write Twig, what I'm going on about, but yeah, YAML. You know, um, it's got lots of themes. So for example, I use Monokai. It's got a whole bunch of themes everywhere, but I'm, you know, um, sublime text person, so I use Monokai, I, don't judge me. But yeah, ex uh, the extensions are pretty good. It also supports the Visual Studio uh, language server stuff. Um, so you can port some stuff over with that, which seems pretty cool. I've not really done any of that yet, but I have delved into the extensions API stuff a little. Um, so I've been writing a language extension for Antlers, which is like the layout, which is these files, the layout language for Statomix, which is like a, a flat file CMS that I quite like, and I'm building this current site. And it's been going all right, to be honest. It, it works quite well. It's got some nice tools for um, inspecting outputs and uh, querying things for building extensions. It's pretty good. So, yeah, I mean, it works the way you expect it to for the most part. So basically, it's like Visual Studio Code, but with fewer extensions right now. Like I said, the extension pool is pretty good. Um, 
but yeah, it's not you're not going to find a one to one with everything in, in VS Code, which is I think is quite tough as a sell. So the sort of highlights of this thing are it's got a few nice features like you've got a built-in terminal, you can do uh, local and remote terminals, that kind of stuff. It's got a built-in web server, or you can configure it to use like I don't know if you're using like Vite or something like that. You can or Vite, however people pronounce it. You can configure it to use that, or a static HTML server, or a live server. You have like inline previews, some nice little features. It's, it's pretty cool, and everything again is 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 pretty polished. Um, but yeah, it always comes down to it's going to be a little bit of a hard sell for people. Like it's paid software basically. Um, so. Comparing it to Visual Studio Code, which is obviously free with more of everything, but performs worse, has some clunk, and also that's basically it. Just performs well and has some clunk. Um, it's a really good product, but yeah, you're up against something that doesn't cost anything. So it's kind of a hard sell. I think if you really like polished, really polished software and you can deal with the immaturity of this. I feel like it's a product that kind of needs a bit of support only because Panic is a company I really like. Uh, they're a really good company. They're, they're an independent company, relatively small. They tend to, they're one of those companies that tend to put things out when they're ready and make sure when they do something, they do the best they can. They like to make good things and they don't grow too quickly and they're not dicks and they just try and make good stuff and they're honest and they're a really nice company to support. So I've given the, the tiniest amount of extra exposure I possibly can, which is basically nothing, but no one's talking about this tool, really. Uh, I, I think they'll be fine. They're a sensible company, you know, but it's a really decent tool. Um, I think if you buy it full price, I got this on a sale and bought it on a whim one day. I think full price is about $90, um, which again, I think is kind of a hard sell, but it's a more, I think... Instead of comparing it to Visual Studio Code, maybe you compare it more to Sublime Text because it's not an IDE. It's still a, a fundamentally a text editor. It's got a few sort of IntelliSense type features, but they're not as mature as Visual Studio Code. So maybe if you compare it to something like um, Sublime Text, which is also technically paid software, it stacks up pretty well. Um, it's about as performant and uh, has all the features. Everything's more polished. It's slightly more fully featured, I'd say, out of the box than Sublime Text is. Again, ex like support for extensions and stuff, but it has got richer interfaces. So if you do use a wibbly wobbly mouse guy, you have some nice panels that you can use. The window management's actually really lovely. You can split things very nicely. Um, you can have double sidebars. You can have really nice setups on it. It's, it's actually really quite good. And uh, yeah, so far, I'm yeah, I, I quite like it. I think it's decent. So check it out. You can get a free trial. I don't know how long the trial lasts. It's Mac only, sorry, but it's a really cool piece of software. They're a cool company and give it a go. Cause I mean, if not anything else, it's really pretty, I guess. Oh, I forgot to mention the inline diffs. This is quite fun. So yeah, you get your inline Git status, but also it's got built in diff, which is fun, right? You can compare it to different versions. You can do, um, you know, your merging and stuff in line. It's quite nice. And the same thing happens when you go into your little Git view, click a file, it will give you an inline diff. I know, again, there's extensions that do that on uh, for Visual Studio Code, etc. But it has a degree of like sort of polish, I guess, to it that makes everything just feel quite nice. It's quite a pleasurable, pleasurable. It's quite a pleasant little tool to use. But yeah, if you have watched this video, I think it looked cool. Give it a go. It's quite nice. I'm not sure if it's worth the money, to be honest. We're going to pay full price for it. I think it's probably worth it if it's on sale. Even if you keep it around as like a slightly more fully featured equivalent to Visual Studio, uh, sorry, to Sublime Text, I don't know. I quite like it. Am I going to carry on using it? I don't know. It's not really annoying me at the moment. Um, like I said, it's it's making me smile more than it makes me frown, which I guess is a good thing. But yeah, that's pretty much it in a nutshell. So thank you for watching. I'm going to go. Um, gonna leave the door open if you can just not be here when i get back that'd be great you know all right cool all right bye